Okay, I just wanted to make a part two and drop a, a few more nuggets of information on this this example we have here. So the one thing we can see from this video is, you know, Draymond plays great defense, great defense, great defense, and as soon as the ball leaves Decker's hand, he kind of just doesn't, he just thinks, like, okay, now I can chill. And, um, I think this is where a lot of edges are to be had, is that just, you know, just hustle, man, like, You can you can beat your opponent in in these type of situations like and and I don't just mean hustle like physically hustle but mentally hustle like if he was mentally hustling as well he would have known that this is a situation where he can exploit Capella and not be exploited in return and the reason is is you know this is exploitable Capella's head is down but normally if if you leave your man to, to help Capella, you're going to be exploited because you're leaving your man wide open. Right. But in this specific instance, he won't be, he, it's unexploitable for him to help. Like, Capella can't exploit Draymond for exploiting Capella. Like, wh when you look at exploitability, whenever you try to exploit someone, you become exploitable right um but in this is this instance that's not the case and you should be looking for these type of oppor opportunities and you should be mentally hustling looking for these type of opportunities and this is one here uh, and it's this is one here for reasons that we mentioned in the last video like um Draymond can help here because you know like we said a b c and d uh, a he's not a good uh, sam decker's not a good three point shooter b his eyes are down. Uh, you know, C, he has to get the pass through uh, Draymond Green, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons why Draymond can help here. And, um, you know, if you're mentally hustling, you, c you should be looking for these type of situations. Um, and, you know, I'll compare it to a, a poker game I was playing the other day. And this is a, a perfect example, I think. Uh, I had very short stack only uh, I was almost out of the tournament so when you're that low on chips you pretty much just gotta pick a hand and go with it and I had ace jack suited and with only a few like like I said when you're that short and you see ace jack suited man that is just a monster of a hand right and you're just going no matter what happens you're just going with it well a player raised in early position and this player I had a note on him that he uh, that he oh I looked him up and he had won almost a million dollars uh playing poker and it also noticed that he plays a lot of tables so I if I know he's playing a lot of tables okay so here the guy the guy raised in early position but the thing is we had just come back from break right and the second the break ended he immediately opened uh he immediately opened the pot he raised like the second the t the break ended so th to me I pictured it from his point of view. I picture a guy sitting at his desk, drinking his coffee. He went and got his coffee on his break, sat down at his desk when he's waiting for the tournament to start again because he's got 24 tapes, 20 different tournaments up, right? And if he's got 20 different tournaments up, and the second the break ends, he chooses the the table I, you know, I'm playing at to raise first, like immediately just raise. That makes me think he's got 20 tables up. He saw like a good hand like pocket kings or pocket aces or something like that and and he saw all of all the hands at all on all his 20 tables you know you're gonna go with the best hand first and and play that one first right and after the break he immediately raised and I was just like okay this guy's in early position a he's in early position you're only supposed to raise a tight range in early position B, you know all these other things that I mentioned about him multi tabling he sees that table first I'm like, wow, this guy's got a monster here. It's right after break, you know. He chose this table to raise first. So I took my ace jack and I folded it. And while that's not something I would normally do, it's like pretty exploitable. I shouldn't 
normally I shouldn't, under normal circumstances, I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, in this specific instance, I was able to, since I was mentally hustling, I, you know, I was able to take something, a, a non-standard line, because it's more profitable. And sure enough, I folded the ace jack, and uh, and I couldn't believe I was doing it. I was like, God, I can't believe I'm folding a two big blind stack with ace jack. But I just know this guy's got like kings or aces or something, or queens, and I was right. So I was, yeah, I was able to take a non-standard line and, and get profit out of it. Just like in this instance, Draymond Green could take a non-standard line like helping here and leaving Decker open. Because it's actually more profitable than than what he did. Uh, I hope you guys were able to draw that connection there, and I I think it's great. If you if you don't understand the connection there, uh, just ask me. You know, write write something in the the comment box. I'll always respond. Um, okay, I I really hope you guys got that uh, connection there because I think it's a perfect uh, a perfect example. The the poker uh, analogy I think it's is absolutely perfect. Uh, okay, bye.